when I go and I teach or when I go and I train or compete, it just completely takes it all away for a moment. And it's very, very meditative. It's very, very healing in a sense. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, Dr. Riley here and welcome to the Wellness Dojo podcast where we provide real solutions to real health and wellness problems. In today's episode, episode 8, Improving Mental Health Through Sport and Exercise, we discuss to what degree sport can improve mental health, the best types of activity, how often you should be exercising to see benefit, and the mechanisms behind how sport improves mental health. There's tons of great info in this episode. Let's go. All right, we're here. Episode eight. Eight right now. Eight. I had to think about that. It's a lucky number in many, many places around the world. Yeah? Yeah, I'm feeling lucky today. All right. Awesome. Well, if you're <laughs> feeling lucky, I'm feeling lucky, man. Yeah. Let's get into it. Um, So I'm going to give a, a pre-warning for today's podcast. Um, No, kids are not at school today, so they are upstairs. You may hear some screaming, some fighting, some bickering, some stomping. If you do, we apologize ahead of Maybe time. Maybe a dog bark. Maybe a dog barking. Yeah, a little chihuahua. So, so we're not in a in a, an expensive studio in LA. Is that what you're telling everyone? Because that uh, was the image I was trying to portray. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, the pulling back the the curtain <laughs> here a little bit. Yeah, yeah the fourth wall. Yeah, no, no, uh, <laughs> no Jerry Seinfeld here today. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool though. Maybe yeah. future guests one day. One day. One There's day. a lot of legal loopholes, but we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, yeah, I say. <laughs> Another thing that we can do is uh, we can talk a little bit about sports today. Sports and mental health, I think, is um, what we were going to talk about today. Yeah, and uh, you know, primarily, you know, just various forms of exercise too. Because uh, uh, what I want to bring to the table today is just talking about how exercise can help with certain mental health conditions, and uh, you know, things like well, help by how much? What is the magnitude of benefit? Um, and then. Not only that, but how is it? How is it happening? We kind of know, you know, intuitively that you know, people that tend to be active also tend to have a good head on their shoulders. They tend to be a little bit happier, maybe have more energy. They're kind of the people getting up in the morning and having good sleeps. And, you know, the people that really just piss us off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, what, so what's going on there, you know, biologically? And uh, I'll get into that a little bit as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, this is a topic that I think both of us are extremely passionate about where we've both been athletic our whole lives. Um, obviously both, uh, gone through the ring, the, you know, we've gone mm -hmm. through those stages in martial arts and everything like that as well. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to get into this one, you know, mental health, first of all, is that's going to be a topic that we're discussing today. I feel mental health has, it's great. It's, it's become a big topic of conversation and it's something that um that is very much a, becoming to the forefront however i think there's confusion around like mental health and what that actually means so what, mm -hmm. what and i know this is an area that you have a lot of expertise and a lot of experience working with people with mental health so in your opinion like what is mental health what's mental health um, I would say mental health, there's there's a few dimensions to it. Um, there's an aspect of, let's say, um, emotional regulation, uh, emotional awareness and regulation. So there's an, an emotional aspect to it. Um, there seems to be some sort of a social component to mental health, too, that, that seems to be very important for us as human beings. So uh, emotional, social, and then, of course, the, the psychological hmm. uh, components as well. And, you know, there's there's like little spats happening. I don't think anyone else sees this, but maybe me and like people in our uh, similar professions. But, you know, between stop, stop calling mental wellness, mental health, stop calling mental health, mental illness, like I get it to a certain degree today when we talk about we're kind of going to talk about mental health and mental wellness interchangeably. And those who argue, you know, you're, don't confuse mental illness with mental health, mental illness, let's just say that's the structured, defined, um, diagnosable conditions and, and often more serious hallucinations, mm. schizophrenia, um, you know, the, some serious stuff, PTSD, things like that. So we're yeah. talking more about like the mental wellness, mental health. It's like, you know, the, the, the slightly um, friendlier version. That's what, so mm. please forgive us if we say mental wellness, mental health, it's all interchangeable today. And and uh, yeah. Yeah. And so I kind of take that almost as, you know, a, a, maybe a comparison or an analogy to the difference there between especially like mental health and mental illness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like 
I work towards my health through exercise. Mm -hmm. However, like there's a difference if I actually have like a disease that yeah, I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah, we're, we're not saying that we're going to solve, you know, auditory or visual hallucinations with exercise. Yeah. Right. It's we're talking about different things. We're talking about symptomatic relief today. You know, symptomatic relief primarily around depression and anxiety. Mm. Uh, there's going to be some overlap with things like um, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, you know, relieving trauma. And I'll explain what the mechanisms, how exercise can actually help that. There's some really cool theories on, on how it helps. But, yeah, we're really going to be talking about um, improving uh, things like depressive scores, anxiety scores. Uh, mostly that's what I'll be referring to today. Yeah. And through exercise, but more specifically through sport, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Cause sport offers a lot of great benefits over and above, you know, just simple exercise and just getting the blood moving, which there is benefit in, but mm. sports elevates it yeah. to another level. Yeah. And so before we get into the, the thick of the sport, uh, you were telling me something, you made me super jealous. You were just telling me a story before we started recording here. Yeah. Do you want to share that story with the listeners as well? Yeah, sure. So, um, so last night I, I just had to get out of the house. I, I think a lot of us are experiencing this, whether it's stir craziness or whether it's just being forced within the confines of the four walls and roof within the people that, that you lived, live with. And just limited, uh, limited ability to get out and about. And I just was really feeling that yesterday. I tried a few things in the in the home, and it didn't work at all. And I just got in the car, and uh, I, I we're lucky enough to have something close by called Fish Creek, which is the largest urban. It's like what is it? The largest urban nature reserve in Canada. Yeah, we crazy. have that down 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 the street from us, so we are a little privileged uh, to have that. But I went down and. I got my scarf and, and my gloves, it's getting a little chilly, and I, I didn't really have a plan. I just kind of knew of some places to walk to, and within five minutes, I come across a, a family of, of four deer, and they're going really slow, and they're just grazing, and and I thought, okay, if I just kind of keep my footsteps like quiet and, and stick to the grass, not the leaves, I can. I feel like I can almost like get in the middle of them and just kind of sit and, and, just, and just take it in. And uh, I was able to do that and, and, and just kind of like find a way so that um, I was still close enough to really feel the benefit of, uh, of, of my dear homies surrounding me <laughs> and not scaring them off. And so I just kind of sat down and, and uh, just watched them graze and, and, and really was, was just uh, thrust into the moment. And it was so great. And then I thought, OK, well, now I'm going to get up and keep walking. That was good. I'm, I'm not going to keep following them. And then uh, another five minutes later, another family of four deer totally different family different color markings and everything and they're so chill down there and mm. uh so i was able to sit on a bench and just kind of there's just deer all around me again and then i'm walking and i see um because it's, it's nighttime i see uh, some sort of bird in the in the tree and i kind of see those horns and it's this owl and uh, i haven't seen an owl in a while and so i'm kind of walking underneath it and it takes off and i thought wow that was so lucky for for it to take off and for me to see it uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'm just going to say that I'm grateful for that. And then I kept walking and I can hear it kind of whoo, hooing in the distance, yeah. but I couldn't see it. And then it took off from its tree and it flew over my head, like right over, just kind of like, you know, an F-15 if you're at a football game or something. And it was, ugh, it was just, it was magical. And then uh, Jupiter and then the stars start coming out and um, I... I walked kind of to this uh, this rocky part of the river where it kind of rocky uh, mm -hmm. in, in the middle part of the river. Um, and so then I decided to sit down and, and do a little meditation. And, um, and I've been I've been studying I've been studying Zazen uh, for a long, long time. My mom gave me a book uh, that was translated into English and um, every page just floored me. It's like this hundred page book, but it took me two years to read because I was, I would read half a page and go, wow, like yeah, everything is, is so intentional. Even the way that you, um, hold your hands or, or kind of wrap, wrap your legs and almost like that butterfly formation. Mm. There's a reason that you do that. And it's to put you in this certain mind state. So when you wrap your, your, your legs in that butterfly formation, you're supposed to be going, okay, so I have, um, I am in one formation with my legs. 
but I have, but it's not really one formation because I have two legs, but it's not really two legs because I'm in one formation. And that's the kind of, and uh, that's the intention of even putting your legs like that, putting your hands like that, because that gets you into this really nice zone of meditation. Mm. And I was doing that with the river too. And I was going, okay, just, just pay attention to the sounds of the river and, and just meditate and just, you know, pay attention to how like the only constant with the river is, is the change and mm. much like life and things like that. But then, um, you know, but you know, the sound is very consistent, but every time that you hear a sound, it's, it's different molecules of water. So it's like, it's the same, but it's not the same all at the yeah. same time. And I hit that just beautiful zone until I started thinking there's some big bobcats around here <laughs> and I am alone in the dark in the middle and I'm sitting and Riley, Riley's torso isn't that big. And I, I imagine I don't look that big, uh, when I'm sitting like that. So I, it started freaking me out. So I had to get up and walk back home, but yeah, yeah what it's, a magical little night. It's fascinating that you just described the river in that way, because it was literally only just yesterday. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with my dad actually and he was telling me that he was listening to a podcast and um, He's a frequent listener to the wellness dojo podcast by the way. So shout out hey, buddy. Um, <laughs> But he was just telling me he was listening to a podcast and somebody was talking about how When they were younger, they would go and sit by the water sit by the ocean and when they were feeling depressed Anxious those types of things. That's what they would do They would just listen to the waves coming in and out and they described it exactly the same way of hmm. you know the waves reminded them that You know everything in life changes nothing stays the same things will constantly continue to change and um, And that really gave them Gave them some solace, right? Mm -hmm. um, Interesting as well. You talk about the intention right like doing things with intention because you know f for me personally I use sport intentionally as like a form of meditation as well, right? And so with martial arts, like I love martial arts. I love going competing. I love teaching, like all of those things. It's similar to what you were just describing. You have a bad day at home or you have an argument with your spouse or whatever the case might be. Uh, you know, you just, you need that break. When I go and I teach or when I go and I train or compete, it just completely takes it all away for a moment. And it's very, very meditative. It's very, very healing in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful segue to how uh, sport and exercise can can help heal certain uh, mental health symptoms. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Where do we start? Can I start? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to be bringing the perspective of, of you know, the literature because that's what I, I chose to dive into yesterday. It looks like the first landmark study for the, the effect of exercise on mental health was done in the late 70s. And which is, you know, fairly recent, I guess. Yeah. And what they found was that, uh, so the, the groups were, I think they were given three to four one hour um, running sessions. And it was led by like a, 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 a running instructor. Okay. So it was pretty good quality. But at the end of the study, they found that the exercise group was, was comparable to the psychotherapy group. And they said, well, there's something here that's that's significant and, and let's do more studies. So that's that's really where it, where it started. Um, and then so now we, now we have like hundreds of studies and tens of thousands of participants kind of thing. Like just in one review I was looking at, they looked at 40 studies and 3000 participants. That was just in, in one review. So mm -hmm. now we have a lot of data um, for what it can for what it can do. So, for instance, with depression, um, it was something like seven out of 10 of the studies that they reviewed showed significant benefit. Mm. But then even in the three out of 10 that didn't show benefit, of course, they improved their overall health scores like body fat and oxygen capacity and, and these other things. So um, but I think it's important to note that, you know, it was seven out of 10 studies. It's not everyone. It's not the silver bullet. You and I yeah. don't uh, preach silver, silver bullet solutions. So that's when I mentioned magnitude of benefit earlier. It's like it's still important for us to, to temper our expectations a little bit and just know how much it really helps. And if something d d uh, decreases depressive scores by 40 percent, that's that's considered a huge, a huge win. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's also important, too, that we look at what you just mentioned, which is you know, it's not, it's not one thing. Like, it's not like we say, okay, sports help with mental health. So go do sports and that'll directly affect your mental health. There might be other factors that are, that are coming into play there. Like you said, like you might do sport and decrease your body fat composition, right? Like you might improve your body composition. You might build lean muscle that might start to give you more confidence walking around every day, mm -hmm. which might 
also affect your depression or your anxiety in a positive way. You might feel less social pressure when you're in situations because now you feel like you don't have to cover your stomach up because you've been, you know, doing this sport, you've been slowly losing weight or, or getting into shape. And so there's, it's, there's, it's complex. It's very dynamic, this conversation, right? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, it's part of, it's part of a comprehensive treatment plan though. Yeah. We're always like uh, me and my, my colleagues and yourself, we're always trying to get people to move more. Yeah. We're all, we're hardly ever getting them to move less unless they're you know, using it as, I don't know, as, as uh, like in uh, like, uh, you know, uh, six bouts of intense exercise a week to anesthetize trauma or other pain, like in that. And I have seen that. And at that point, it's like, you need to scale back the exercise. It's probably yeah. harming you. But yeah. other than that, we're almost always getting to people trying to get people to move more. Yeah. We're built in a society right now. We're, we're very like structured to move less. Like everything that we do is about efficiency, speed, and that, you know, moving takes time. <laughs> so if mm -hmm. it, you know, if you have to walk from this building to that building, well, that's not going to, you know, that's not going to benefit your superiors. So no, instead, like, look at what's going on in the world right now with, uh, you know, online meetings, virtual mm -hmm. meetings and stuff. It's so much easier now. I can go meeting to meeting to meeting if I need to mm -hmm. virtually. Whereas if I have somebody come in or I have to go to see somebody that takes extra time, that's not as efficient but it might be much more beneficial for my body to actually walk to that client's house or to, you know, but that's not the way that the world is, seems to be turning. And that's something that you and I and other people in this profession are really trying to turn mm -hmm. yep. or, or at least trying to savor some of that. Yep. Right. Yep. So uh, let, let me just kind of go through some of the conditions and what I saw or conditions and symptoms and what I saw in the research. So we talked a little bit uh, about depression already. Um, it looks like aerobic exercise, at least, uh, is comparable uh, to psychotherapy. And then they found later that they would have a separate group that had some sort of a drug treatment. Mm. They weren't psychotherapy and drug. They were either or. So, and sorry, for the listeners that might not, like, w when we say psychotherapy, um, what can you give them, like, a just like a really brief breakdown of like what that is yeah it's 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 a form of counseling whether administered by a psychiatrist um they're like let's let's just say a psychologist or a psychiatrist um psychiatrist being someone who is a has a medical doctor's degree and can prescribe a psychologist mm. um, somebody that really specializes in in the most part in um in cognitive behavioral therapy which is increasing awareness and then um reframing um, certain thoughts yeah and that's that's pretty much what it is And the sessions are either individual or group and they're typically an hour long yeah so at fear of being like way too generalized here we're basically saying that you know going for um extra like the people who were doing exercise but not you know seeing a psychologist or a psychiatrist mm -hmm. or a counselor we're seeing similar benefits to people who were either seeing a, a psychologist or a counselor or people who were given an antidepressant. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, and then insofar as anxiety goes, it wasn't quite as prominent as with depression, which is, is notable. They, uh, in the research, they called it a small but significant effect okay. on anxiety, which just means it was, it was maybe a little bit smaller than the researchers thought it would be, but it was still statistically significant uh, in comparison to, let's say, placebo, mm. the placebo control arm. Uh, with ADHD, they did studies about... Uh, concentration uh, with a computer game and the concentration was increased by 30 percent in the exercise group and i believe they would exercise first and then kind of do whatever this video game was in the research uh, ptsd it significantly improved um, certain depression scores and then they took this to other populations pregnant women who uh, maybe have like prepartum depression or, or something like that helped with uh, that population, helped with the elderly. They found with adolescents, it didn't help quite as much mm. because it's probably a little bit more complex. They're, there's a good chance that they're already active, you know, as, as just you know, yeah. young people. And so, um, yeah, so in that population, it wasn't seen quite as much of a benefit, but definitely in adults. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's really kind of a, a rundown there. I've said, I've said my piece about, uh, <laughs> about the research there. It's, it's fascinating too. And I'll add to it a little bit, just in the sense that, you know, I've seen so many cases with students who have come in that are like in martial arts that I'm teaching that come in to see me and they've either had trauma in their life where, 
you know, they've had negative relationships with you know, maybe their, their mom or their dad, or maybe they have um, ADHD or, you know, just lots of different, um, you know, if we're talking like mental health, mental illnesses mm -hmm. that have come up or, or even just, you know, just trauma that that's caused those things. Um, I've seen so many amazing transformations mm -hmm. that go like so like under the radar too. Like I've had parents that have come up to me and this isn't just me. Like I, you, you see this across the board in martial arts and sports, like coaches hear this stuff all the time. So mm -hmm. it's not just me, but it's truly empowering to, you know, have parents that come up to you and say, like, I don't even like recognize this kid anymore. And it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. Like you've completely changed them. Like, what have you done and stuff like that? And I think it, it does, like, especially you talk about ADHD and that kind of thing, like having something like that to focus your energy on yes, is so powerful. And same thing with, you know, depression, anxiety and stuff like that. I do think that's a big part of it. Um, and this is just, you know, my opinion, but I do think that's a big part of it. It's just like having a, a source where you can focus your attention to and that, that kind of takes you away and gives you a break from all these other distractions. I think it can be a really powerful thing for kids and adults. And I have seen it in adults as well that have come and said, yeah, this like doing this martial arts class, like I do it for my mental health. Like I, I have people right now that, have, that tell me that I say, like, why, why, why are you guys here today? Like, what's mm -hmm. your purpose day? Like, I'm here for my mental health, because if I don't come here, then I am super anxious at home or my ADHD or my ADD just goes crazy at home. Like I, they feel that impact and they feel the difference when they're not doing the sport versus when they are even from a day to day basis. And there's a lot that could be going on there. Uh, one of the things that came out uh, when I was preparing for this episode was the concept of self-efficacy. Mm -hmm. And so self-efficacy, I mean, that's like, it's competence, right? In, in, in something, competence and confidence, yeah. which obviously is, is going to, to go a long way and accomplishment, yeah. right? And so when you are... And, when, and acknowledgement, right? That's a part of it yeah, as well, right? Yeah, yeah, especially that social... Well, acknowledgement, you know, to yourself that you can do it, but then that social feedback yeah. that you're getting from others, from parents, from... Yeah, hey, Dr. Coaches. Ali, you did great today on the on that podcast episode. Like, that's... Who doesn't know. like to hear that? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, there. no, no. <laughs> I, it, and so, um, yeah, so, so self-efficacy is probably one of uh, the factors that is helping to improve um, some of these, uh, let's call them um, symptomatic scores with, mm. with regards to, to mental health. And something else that, that came up that I know is obvious, but it's just still nice to see this stuff come up and, and, and be uh, defined in the research. Social interaction is a big one. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Community, and, right? And, yeah. And so when earlier when we were talking about the difference between just pure exercise and sport, with sport, you even in individual sports, you get that social interaction because you're still training with others. Yeah. You still have a coach, even if, you know, you are a, 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 an individual like... The, the top mixed martial artist fighters, they, they, they pay people to come and, and train with them, right? It's you're never alone. Yeah, you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And um, I was re I recently was actually listening to another podcast from another martial artist that I know of. Um, a shout out to the shout out podcast. Uh -huh. <laughs> cool. So um, but in this podcast, he was actually talking about something similar is about like the difference between like somebody who goes and competes and they're like they've been working by themselves versus the one with the coach and it's like almost every time the people who have a team behind them mm -hmm. are so much better like they just perform better they have more confidence like all around it's just better absolutely yeah. so that community aspect that that team aspect that um you know having that coach having that that support around you that acknowledgement and also that desire to want to you know show that you can do it right you got yes. that team behind you there's more pressure but you know, what does pressure do? Pressure pushes you up to the top a lot of the times, right? To a certain degree. Well, yeah. uh, and that's something we can get into as well. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it makes you want to work harder for those people as well. Yeah. And there's another thing that was really interesting um, in the research. And that was that, so they were looking at, uh, so through all these studies, there's some that have uh, like individualized exercise and there's some that has group exercise. And what these, uh, what, what one set of researchers found is that even when certain articles were talking about um, this group was given like individual exercise sessions 
they were like they still had supervisors and they still had people watching them and and you know at, at least there was someone with them mm-hmm. And uh, because they didn't see a big difference between individual and group, but this was their conclusion that individual still was an individual as, you know, a, a pure, in a purest sense. Yeah. 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 And it's funny because we're talking about, you know, we've now kind of shifted onto this topic of like being successful from a team, but that has a massive impact on your mental health when you are in sport, right? It's, you know, there there is definitely a place for for losing and being defeated and stuff like that to help mm-hmm. build you up yeah but um there's also something to be said for being successful and you know going in and winning and maybe not winning but but at least performing at your best and and feeling like you are um getting better right that's a big part of that because that's that's kind of that endorphin rush a little bit too of like oh wow i improved today this is working this is great that helps me keep going Right. Mm -hmm. And so having that that community around you to help, you know, motivate you, pump you up, support you, give you acknowledgement, give you feedback. Like it's huge for your mental health because you feel supported. Yeah, it is huge. We're social creatures, right? Yeah. And now there might be people out there thinking, okay, but just tell me what type of sport is the best? What type of exercise? Martial arts. (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know, you're you're actually pretty accurate there. And, And I'll tell you why. So. Uh, they looked at the difference between aerobic, which is like cardiovascular, you know, you're, you're like low to moderate intensity, something you can do for an hour or more, mm-hmm. arguably, <laughs> depending on your fitness level. Um, and then anaerobic, which is like, you know, it's anaerobic just means it doesn't really, you don't need that oxygen capacity. It's like quick explosive, it's weight training, it's, it's, it's things like that. You're talking like anaerobic being more of like the hit training, sprinting, like that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So which is better? Well, I'm sorry to say that the they, they weren't really able to parse out that one is better than the other. But, and I think we kind of mentioned this last time, but when you combine the two and you do a combination of anaerobic and aerobic together as your exercise, it outperforms aerobic individually or anaerobic individually. Yeah. Which is very interesting. So there's your answer. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it also... There's a level, again, as I always go back to sustainability too, right? So let's say somebody is listening to this and they're saying, wow, they're making some really good points. Uh, Maybe I should start a sport. Well, what can I do? Well, it depends. What can you do? What, you know, what, what works in your routine? What are you willing to sacrifice to, to do something? Mm -hmm. Right. Because I remember in high school, I never played football in high school. It was something I always wanted to do. And I was like, ah, it'd be cool to play football. Um, but the time commitment, I just couldn't make it happen. Like when I looked at it, I was like, they want to practice every, almost like every morning, every day after school, I've got martial arts as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I just like literally could not make it happen. It just didn't make sense for me. Um, people need to look at that as well. Right. Hiking, you could consider a sport. Yeah. Well, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you look at hiking and then you look at like going and playing soccer with your kids. Right. One of those two things requires a lot more time commitment than the other. So you might be able to go and play sports with your, you know, soccer with your kids three days a week, be able to do it for 30 to 60 minutes, but you might not be able to go hiking three days a week. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, I think that's where also finding a mixture is really important is in, you know, what it's giving you, but also your ability to actually stay with it consistently and sustain it. Right? That's right. That's right. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you're not going to go play sports once and your mental health is going to, it'll, it might improve from that one time, but it's not going to be like a long-term fix. It's, you got to find something that you can incorporate it consistently. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, you kind of started, um, bringing up something and that is how frequent do we have to do it to start seeing benefits too? And so I'll tell you what I found, and I think that you found something maybe slightly different, uh, and I really like what you found uh, mm. as well. So for myself, and I was looking into it, 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 it looks like something to the tune of three bouts of exercise a week for 30 minutes. So three, three times 30 minutes was about the minimum needed to see benefit, according, according to what, what I was looking at. And uh, these researchers did not see uh, much of an impact if you did less than that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because when you had told me about that, I kind of, I don't know if I'd call it a rebuttal, but I, I also had read something uh, that there was a study that was done and it was it was more focused on like your physical health, not so much focused on your mental health. However, what the study showed was, uh, you know, there's this idea of like um, 
and we kind of touched on this in our last episode on exercise and kind of the relationship with exercise but there's this idea of like what's enough like how do you know like if what you're doing is enough kind of thing and the example is like somebody is running 10 minutes late for a yoga class they'll decide well i'm just not going to go because i'm going to be 10 minutes late and if i can't get the whole class it doesn't count Hmm. it's like so it's looking at that idea and and the study kind of proved that idea wrong in a sense where it actually saw massive improvements from people who were just getting up and sitting less throughout the day. So getting up, moving around, moving away from their desk, going for a short walk, getting a one minute, you know, exercise done throughout the day. Like those types of things actually showed massive benefits to people's health, to their cardiovascular system, digestive system, immune system, like all of it. And I mean, yeah, your nervous system as well, which is very, uh, you know, tied into your mental health. And it actually showed that there could be more benefit to doing something like that, to just sitting less, moving more Mm -hmm. versus traditional, like one hour weight training session Mm -hmm. here and there, like three times a week kind of thing. So there's when you're looking at long term benefits for a lot of, and maybe consistency comes into that as well. It's easier to sustain your ability to just get up and move around versus committing to, you know, this sport or this exercise. But it was interesting to hear. It's like just moving more. It's something I think that can really help people take some pressure off themselves when you are looking to like, I want to start doing a sport, but how do I, how do I commit to it when I have everything else going on? How do I commit to going and playing, you know, dodgeball two nights a week and some league? Well, maybe that's not, maybe you don't have to start with that. Maybe you can start with, like I said, going playing soccer with your kids once a week, Mm -hmm. right? You're going to still see the benefits and you'll build, you'll build onto them. And I would really encourage everyone that if you do have the option, uh, if you're able to engage in moderate uh, intensity exercise, that's going it's going to benefit you more than than low intensity. It's just a fact. It's yep. and it, that's not just that's not my opinion. They found that uh, there there wasn't a tremendous benefit with with low intensity when it like when it came to 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 most conditions they were looking at, but as, you know especially the more severe conditions. Yeah. So for something like schizophrenia, they were saying that low intensity heart. I mean, it, it hardly moved the needle on statistical significance, but moderate to high intensity did, and you know it was black and white. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where that mixture comes in too, right? It's mm-hmm. like, what do I need versus what can I sustain? Like, find uh, find a balance in there for you, um, whether it whether that's sports and trying to commit. Like, you know, I still love football just because I didn't play it in high school. You know, I would still play it at recess. I would mm. still play it at lunchtime with yeah. with all the other kids that played football. Um, and uh, yeah, you, I still saw the benefits from that, from that camaraderie, from that competition, and. Um, yeah, same with martial arts. You know, I I've never trained seven days a week in martial arts. We've always had like our club's always been part time. It's kind of day day on day off. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, and so like I would you know do a little bit of practice at home and stuff, but you know the benefits that I got from it were massive compared to you know some people also saw the similar benefits, but they trained you know seven days a week or you know, for much longer hours and stuff like that. It's you you do what you need to do for you and, and, and take the benefits from them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so like we know, so we talked a little bit about how exercise, it can uh, improve self-esteem, um, that, that concept of self-efficacy, which is like accomplishment and and competency and things like that. The social interaction, uh, even if it doesn't work on the body or sorry, on the mind, it works on the body where, you know, it it can change your um, body fat composition and lean muscle and all that. Um, there's some other things going on that are really cool. And I mean, I don't know if, if you have any opinions on what you think could be going, I have the answer, so I'm cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating. Okay. But put me to the test. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have to be like super specific, but like how, do how, and you don't even have to answer, but how, how do you think exercise and sport is impacting mental health kind of beyond what we've already talked about, almost the inner mechanisms. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, well, I mean, we've talked about a little bit about focus and how that, that can be mm-hmm. a really big impact with um, just having something to focus on. I think that what what sport has done, and I'll, I'll just pull from my own personal experience, is it really forces you to go inside, right? You have to, you, you can, and I'm not just talking about like dig deep and push through it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you have to, you learn about yourself. And we talk a lot about if you want to make change, you have to be willing to reflect. Well, for me in martial arts and in any other sport that I've done, it's forced reflection on me, Hmm. right? So I have 
taking that time after a loss to reflect on what do I do better. I have taken that time after my instructor told me, no, it's still not good enough. Say, what else can I do here? I've taken that time after a win to think, what did I do right? What more can I improve on? What does this mean for me? Or I've taken time when I've been nervous and try, tried to figure that out. I've taken time when I've been pissed off after something that went wrong. And and also it's, it's forced me to, you know, look at things that have gone on and anybody who's read any of my past blogs or any any videos that I've done, like I always come back to to martial arts and it's because that sport, the lessons that you learn in sport translate to life. Almost every lesson I've learned in martial arts translates somehow to life. And maybe that's just the philosophical me, but I can take any any lesson, any argument with my wife, any, you know, frustration that I've maybe had from, you know, an argument with a friend or, or a dispute or, or maybe my kids not listening to me and I can think back to a time in competition in sport in class and and pull lessons from that and be able to relate to that and that really does help me to think like okay I have experienced this I like I have experience to deal with this now and that takes a lot of overwhelm away when you can do that nice yeah the best dojos in martial arts schools they they really teach how to build great people and, yes. not, and not just great fighters. Yeah. And when we were talking about our journey towards the black belt, like, you know, I just, I was looking up to the other black belts as, as I was coming through the ranks, not just as great fighters, but they just seem to be great people. They would be so intense when they're competing. And then you could go up to them as an orange belt or a green belt and say, that was awesome. And they would like, you know, I was really little back then and they would kind of come down even to my level so that they weren't yeah. and down to my level and say, thanks so much. I, I wish you, you, how did it go today for you? Like they're so humble and, and it's yeah. just awesome. And yeah. Yeah. And this, this might be a little bit like left field and a little bit tangent. Uh, tangent's not the right word. Sure but, it is. But, um, you know, one thing for me is I never really felt like I, I fit in anywhere. And even still, I really don't. Like, I don't feel like I fit into the industry that I'm in even. Um, I've never had like gym buff buddies and stuff like, like I've just never had that stuff and even in high school like I said like I was never in with the football people I was never in with the basketball people I was you know I didn't go to parties that often and stuff like I would get asked but after a few no's you know people stop asking and mm. stuff like that and that's my choice and I I was happy with that decision but martial arts and and that that community that I had I always had somewhere where when I went there I felt like I belonged like they made me feel that way and that's what a team does like and you know not in every case right but in 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 most cases and you know if if you have the benefit of having a very positive team experience then it can be so beneficial in that sense of like i think a lot of us sometimes feel lost feel like we're kind of on the outsides anytime i've i went to martial arts my instructor my team yourself included like you you just knew that they had you like it didn't matter if you were straight, gay, white, black, like old, young. It, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it just didn't matter. It was like you are a part of the team. For us, it was the Mai Zhong Lohorn team. It's like you are Mai Zhong Lohorn. We've got you, right? And it is, it's family. Mm -hmm. it, it always was. Our instructor always made it feel that way. So now I'm, you know, I really, really emphasize that in my teachings as well, um, and in my coaching is like. I don't care if you win or lose. I just want to see you grow, right? And that's that's huge for people and that's huge for mental health. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's some other things that uh, sport and exercise, here's uh, some other ways that it can really Im like positively impact mental health in case anyone's wondering. So one that I don't think is too surprising is that it boosts those um, brain chemicals, those neurotransmitters. So uh, what it does is it, and, and you know, this isn't just hearsay, it, it boosts... Um, epinephrine which increases alertness so you know if, if you're if you're depressed now if you increase your alertness that's a, a, a nice change in mind state uh, it increases dopamine which is kind of that reward pleasure and it increases serotonin which is gives you general feelings of well-being and there's a strong implication with anxiety and, and serotonin so that's one of the things um, the other is that it can produce something called endocannabinoids, which is kind of, uh, and, and it's like our internal um, opioid system, which is like um, almost like this, this pain relief system that we have. Healthy natural drugs. Yeah, yeah. 
what else do you want, really? Uh, it also it also increases something called BDNF, uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor. Neurotrophic uh, just is, means like brain growth, mm. really. And you actually see BDNF increased also when you give someone an antidepressant. Mm. So that's why there's a similar mechanism happening with exercise. It also there's a bunch of fancy words, synaptogenesis and angiogenesis and things like <laughs> that. Right, which, stop showing off. Yeah, Come which on. just means it, it can increase, it can it can literally grow um, new avenues for, for brain cells and, and brain transmission. And so that angiogenesis is just like the splitting off of um, the mis- micro blood vessels in the brain and you're creating new vasculature and new blood flow. And exercise, it like it temporarily creates a pro-inflammatory state, which this all happens in pro-inflammatory, which we're all anti-inflammatory crazy and mm-hmm. antioxidant crazy. But, you know, ex- exercise, it, it this is how it promotes brain growth. And it's, it's very unique. There's not a lot of things in the world that can create that, but exercise can. So you were talking about like reflection and, 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 and uh, various mind states that um, exercise can put you in. And one of the things that uh, exercise and sport can do for people is it puts them in flow state. Mm-hmm. Flow state is a wonderful place to be. It really is. It, it's when you're, it's when the, the challenge of whatever the task is and your skills are just in perfect harmony. Yep. It's not too easy. It's not too hard. It's just, it's just perfect. And so you, you kind of, you reach flow state slowly, I would say with a little bit of practice, but when you're in flow state, guess what? You're not thinking about other things. Yeah. That's, that's that meditative state that I was talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, you know, and that was parsed out in the research. And the last thing I want to talk about is this theory. uh, And it's another just words, transient hypofrontality theory. (laughs) Okay, so hypo meaning less, the frontality meaning the the part of our brain that's always like thinking and judging and being critical and making decisions. Well, when you're anxious or depressed, that um, that part, you know, it, it like it's it's hard to say exactly which parts of the brain because you could argue that you know you can overthink things, um, and that's going to impact you. And you can also argue that the like the reptilian automatic stressful parts of 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 the inner brain that can also be impacting you. But here's the theory. Okay, well, let me simplify this. The theory is that when you exercise, blood in your brain goes towards m- the motor cortex or motor cortices, motor areas in your brain. So when I say motor, I'm talking like moving your arms, moving your legs, things like that. It goes to those areas of the brain instead of the areas of the brain that have to do with thoughts and language and, th- and things like that that are, you know, can be amplified when you're when you're anxious, when you're depressed and overthinking things and, and uh, you know, be, be being hypercritical of yourself and things like that. Exercise, it, it literally takes the, 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 the blood, the energy, it takes it away from those centers and redistributes it, mm. which I thought was really cool. And I, I totally can see how that, that's real, yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, and, you know, to wrap that in a pretty bow, it, essentially what we're saying is like exercise and sport in general will make you smarter and they will make you more positive. Mm -hmm. Like really smarter, stronger, faster. Yeah. (laughs) Like a couple other things like endorphins, right. Mm -hmm. That help reduce stress hormone, like cortisol, like all those things have a massive impact. This is why when, you know, when you're stressed out and you, you go to exercise, it can help with that. Right. Mm Because it's actually diminishing some of those stress hormones in your body and countering them with, you know, feel good hormones in your body. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's funny because people might recognize this, like we're using kind of sport and exercise kind of interchangeably. There's a reason for that. It's because they are one and the same thing, really. Um, I mean, there is a massive difference that we've covered in this episode already on, you know, doing a workout alone in your basement or, you know, going to a fitness class or going to a sport and playing, you know, hockey or doing a martial arts class where you got people around you, supporting you, cheering you on helping you get better. There's a big difference there, but, but really like sport is exercise. When a lot of people think about exercise, they think about the first thing they think about hitting the weights, going to an aerobics class, going for a run, those types of things. We don't tend to, I mean, I do, but most people I would, I would think would uh, agree that they don't tend to think of like, you say exercise, I think hockey, you think exercise, I think soccer. No, we, but sport is exercise. And I think the biggest advantage to sport 
um, because you're going to get these benefits whether you go and do traditional exercise or whether you do a sport for the most part other than some of the things that we've covered but what sport does is sport gives you a distraction from it being exercise right you're doing it you're having fun hopefully because you're doing you chose a sport that you actually enjoy and it, it really does make it so much easier to go and do it Right. And then having that community around you makes such a huge difference is the reason why CrossFit got so popular. Hmm. It's that community around it. It's yeah. that, you know, come on, you can do it. Let's go with somebody standing over you and giving you that that motivation, um, so to speak. Um, that's, you know, that's the same reason why, you know, you see in sports, people get so intense. People get so excited when they when they win, they cheer, they, you know, they have all of that around them. It's a fun way to get exercise in. And as we've talked about many times before, if you can keep exercise fun, you can keep it going much, much longer. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'll give my own little synopsis and you, you can, I'll turn right. it over to you. Yep, so got it. yeah, so sir, for myself, uh, exercise and sport can really improve symptomatic scores, especially around depression and, and anxiety. Um, but just temper the expectations because it, it doesn't absolutely help everybody. But even those that it doesn't help with their symptoms, it can still help in other areas. Um, so, you know, uh, like decreasing symptomatic scores, let's say by 50% is considered a huge victory. So we're not talking about 100% here. We're not saying that you start doing this and everything will be solved. But you know, for some people, I'm sure that can happen as, as, as you've experienced. Um, there's no real difference between aerobic and anaerobic, but the combination is best. If you have the physical ability, try to do moderate to high intensity exercise, you know, a few times a week for up to 30 minutes uh, about kind of thing. So maybe I'll just stop there and hand it over to you. Yeah, no, I think you, I think you nailed it, man. Um, the only other thing that I would add to that, that, that we've kind of uh, glazed over today is, you know, choose something that you're going to enjoy. And when you are doing something, focus on the benefits that you're getting, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime that I've struggled in, in martial arts or any other sport, when I focus on the benefits, focus on what is that, what is it giving me? What did I learn here? What, what, what's the advantage to this experience right now? Then that's, that's only going to help you. Right. Because like you said, it's not it's not a magic solution. You're not going to go play a sport and all of a sudden your anxiety is going to be gone. It's probably still going to be there. It's probably, you, you know, it's something that helps you manage it. It's something that helps you make these things better. Um, but it is going to make you smarter. It's going to make you f more positive. It's going to make you feel better when you're doing it most days. And it's going to make you feel more connected to yourself and others. Absolutely. And that's so huge. important. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, yeah. this was fun. This is a good episode. I think we could have gone for like four hours on this topic, <laughs> but we tried to hone it in for the listeners. We're trying. Yes. Um, so maybe this is a topic. If you guys liked it, then definitely let us know um, on social media or reach out to us personally. Um, let us know that you liked this episode or share it, please, because that would really help as well, um, because I, I do think this is an important subject for a lot of people. And it's, you know, maybe something that isn't being talked about a ton in terms of mental health is, you know, sport. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Yes. And it's, uh, well, de and depending on the season, you might have to get a little creative as well. You might have to fight, fight with the elements, but you can, you can, you can do things all season long. Oh, we yeah. have four very strong seasons where, where we are right now and we can do it. You can do it too. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, look forward to having you listen on the next episode as well. Same here. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye.